Hey friends, my name is Osama and this is a milestone video that I'm creating every time I hit a major milestone in my YouTube channel, like right now, 500 subscribers, I create a Q&A video. So in my Instagram, I release a question and answer in my story. Pretty much you can ask me any question and I delve into my personal life, uh, my work, my finances, whatever you want to ask me about my life, I can delve into that. Yeah, you, you can learn a little bit more about me. But basically this video is for you, it's for the viewers. Uh, for your entertainment and it's a bit of an unscripted video so nothing is scripted here everything just goes as it goes so it's not like my other videos which are very condensed very very scripted to start off i just want to thank all of you for subscribing to my channel uh it means a lot i've learned so much over the past year that i've been doing youtube uh, a year and a bit it's been such a fun hobby and a fun challenge that i've introduced into my life it's helped me develop in in ways i can't even express so it's been a really positive, life-changing journey for me, this, uh, this, this YouTube journey, to be honest. I, I never expected myself to create a channel and start pumping out content. Uh, the whole video editing process has become a lot easier. Um, it's become streamlined. I have a whole process set in place where I script my videos, I, I, I edit them, and then I start publishing them. Uh, creating thumbnails has become easier. So. Over time, if you do something again and again, it just becomes easier. Uh, that's something, uh, you know, if you, if you go back and look at my past videos, it's, it's kind of embarrassing to, <laughs> to go down and see how much the quality has improved. And that's why I leave these videos up there because it's just a humbling experience to just go back and see. Last year, I was able to make subpar mediocre, very low quality videos, uh, even though I had similar equipment that I have right now. But now the, the the game has changed. It's been, it's been a great journey. Uh, I've had a lot of fun, and I'll be responding to some of the questions that came in. Uh, let's start off with uh, Arash Sharif. Uh, Arash, um, he asks, "What keeps you going? What keeps you going?" Uh, I think momentum keeps you going in life, um, especially when it came when it comes to YouTube uh, or life in general, like work or or family and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. It's it's just momentum. It's it's those small wins that keep you going. Personally, this last year, what I learned was what keeps me going is going to sleep early at night, like 9 p.m., 8 p.m., and waking up bright and early in the morning and getting those small wins, like meditating, uh, re getting my reading done, script writing, all in the morning uh, so that I could have the rest of the day free to, to do whatever I want, whether it be work, whether it be... Uh, whether it be my leisure time. I think my morning routine is something that really keeps me going. Number two is my diet. My diet's really important to me in my life. You may have seen some of my uh, my keto videos or vlogs. I think that's something that really keeps me going and motivated. Uh, also a positive, uh, positive environment. I think, uh, you know, keeping good friends in, 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 your, in your close circle is something that keeps me going. Momentum that you build through small habits, my diet, uh, my morning routine. Uh, that's really important going to sleep early at night uh and and just keeping positive company around you uh, i think those those uh, those are some of the things that just keep me going and physical activity hitting the gym so i'm really happy gyms are open because of uh COVID. i think that was really tough on everyone now that gyms are open i'm going for swims i'm you know i'm just i'm i'm having a great time to be honest just just enjoying that experience uh, again. A uh, question that I got is, how much is enough when it comes to money, subscribers, and worldly possessions? Wow, okay, so this is a great question. Uh, you know, I'm making a video on reaching 500 subscribers on my YouTube channel. My last one was 150, uh, my next one's gonna be 1,000. The question is pretty much, why, when is it enough? When, when will you be satisfied? Uh, and I and I reflected on that. I, I think I think right now in life I'm in a really comfortable spot. That's not always a good thing. Okay, um, I I think I, I'm really satisfied with where I am in my career. Uh, even even early into my career, I'm pretty satisfied to be honest. Also, I think uh, I'm I'm really happy with with where I am physically. Also, obviously I can I think I can improve um, mental health wise, doing really well. So I think those are some of the core things that that have kind of kept me satisfied over the years, o over this last year that have kept me satisfied. But I think in terms of subscriber count, uh, in terms of worldly possessions, I don't see that as necessarily a milestone toward happiness. 
this is simply a milestone in, in terms of where things are at, at the moment and to just take a step back and, and celebrate that milestone. But I don't necessarily take it to heart that, okay, I have to reach 500,000 subscribers in order for me to be satisfied. I think I'm really satisfied with my YouTube channel at the moment. I also think, yeah, I'm, I'm just extremely satisfied already with my YouTube channel and no matter how much success I get in this, uh, in, you know, with YouTube, it's just a cherry on top. It's just, it's just something that's a bonus uh, for me. Uh, so um, in terms of worldly possessions, in terms of YouTube channel growth, I think it's just a bonus. Um, I think one of the highlights for me this, this last year was actually, um, uh, was actually getting a sponsorship. Uh, so having a company, Copenhagen Atomics, sponsor a video series for me, I think that was a um, really cool um, opportunity that I got uh, as, you know, very early into my channel, which I was very surprised at, but uh, very grateful for that and uh, looking forward to continue working with other, uh, other companies in the future. All right, so next question is, would you marry someone who has the same name as your mom? <laughs> Yeah, so this question really made me laugh. <laughs> uh, that'd be so awkward. I think my mom's watching this video right now. But yeah, I think my my mom's my mom has a unique name. My mom has a unisex name, so it could be applied to ma a man or a woman. It's more of a male dominant name. So I don't think um, yeah, I, I just haven't met too many girls with with my mom's name. So I think. For me to find a girl to marry with my mom's name would be a very rare thing, okay? Uh, that's number one. And number two, marrying someone with my mom's name. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't necessarily see a problem with that. Um, I just maybe give her a different nickname and just maybe call her that. <laughs> so that's something, somehow I would mitigate um, the awkwardness. Uh, and that's that's about it, I would say. I don't think it's a big, pretty big of a deal. Uh, but it would be pretty funny uh, to, to find someone uh, with the same name as my mom. Pretty, pretty, pretty rare thing. Another question is day in the life video. So a lot of, uh, I've, I've gotten a lot of messages uh, when I posted the story as to people interested in seeing that day in the life um, video, maybe day in the life at work at OPG or day in the life at university that I, that I spent before COVID. I think that would be a really cool video. I think, uh, I think I'd maybe have to bring that up with, with my team and see, see what they think. But also, um, uh, that would be a really cool project uh, to to work on. I've I've done some morning routine uh, vlogs and videos, and I and I, w I really want to. That's on my bucket list to to do another uh, morning vlog um, uh, to show my morning routine and how it's changed. I think it's improved quite a bit. Yeah, that's something that's that's on my to do list, and and uh, I, I look forward to getting get, getting through that. Uh, another question uh, from Sami Yarhan is uh, take corrosion again or waste? Okay. All right. So corrosion or waste, those are the two, two of the most difficult uh, subjects in the nuclear engineering undergrad program. Uh, and uh, they're kind of like the gatekeepers for, uh, for keeping students back <laughs> in their undergrad. I would say corrosion versus waste. I would just say waste management, hands down because although it's taken as the most difficult course, I just feel like that course has a lot more writing involved, which I'm good at, whereas corrosion is more mathematics and a, a, a little bit more complex in terms of the science. Uh, so I would choose waste management just because I'm good at writing and I, I just find the content a lot easier. So uh, yeah, Sammy, great question. I would choose waste management. Uh, another question for me, uh, what's your favorite movie? So Mustafa, uh, Mustafa Aziz asks, what's your favorite movie? And my reply to that is, um, uh, I, I have a few favorite movies. I, I don't I don't necessarily have a big list of favorite movies. I would say, number one, I would say the X-Men series. That's my favorite. Um, I, I love X-Men, A to Z. I, I, I love all, all the X-Men content. Uh, what's funny is that um, uh, the school, Parkwood, I think it's called Parkwood Manor or Parkwood uh, Estate. So Parkwood Estate is, is the school which X-Men is based off of. It's actually located in Oshawa, interesting, where my university is, Ontario Tech. Um, I, was, I was amazed to learn about that recently. It's, it's the home of uh, one of the founders of General Motors. Uh, so I would say my favorite movie is X-Men, then I would say Avatar, not the last airbender, the other one. Um, it, it, it reminds me, it, it just tells you so much about hum, humans and how 
uh, and how greedy we are for natural resources and we went to a different planet and exploited those people uh, and, and even their culture, to be honest, right? Almost like col colonization, right? And, um, and how we try to inf inf infiltrate them uh, through even becoming, you know, getting into their bodies almost, right? So I just found it very, very, very fascinating. And also the fact that um, the main character rebels against the humans um, and they're able to win. I, I just, I don't know, great, great storyline, great way in which they painted this culture, the alien culture the, of, the, of the Avatar folks. Um, so I, I love that movie. I also really like uh, Inception. Uh, I, I love movies where there's a lot of thinking involved, a lot of like com complexity. Uh, Inception was one of those movies I just, um, I found fascinating to be honest. And then lastly, I would say The Matrix. The Matrix, there's a lot of philosophy, there's a lot of hidden messages in that movie. Um, I, I think it's a, it's a wonderful movie and I, I can't wait to see the, the new one that's being released recently. Um, so I, I would say I would add that to my list. Does the lack of growth in the nuclear industry in Canada demotivate you? Hamza uh, Farhat Ali asks. Right now, the nuclear industry is in an interesting spot where in, in Canada, where we do have refurbishments going on, major projects where Darlington and Bruce Power uh, for decades on end are going to provide jobs. Uh, so that's something that's a really positive thing as well. I, th I think we're in a peculiar spot where things are balancing out, to be honest, uh, where the refurb jobs compared to the jobs that are going away are just kind of balancing out. I think I have trust in this company. I, I feel like, you know, I'm just speaking for myself here. We'll be able to balance things out. There's small modular reactors as well on the rise. I think that's something that uh, Canada honestly needs desperately. We, we need n new nuclear technologies. So right now things don't seem as, uh, you know, bright and happy as maybe 10 or 15 years ago. But I feel as though right now there is a ray of hope in the horizon, right? Small modular reactors and also refurb. So, you know, right, right now, I, I, I would say to you, Hamza, that uh, the lack of growth, it doesn't demotivate me. It did demotivate me when I was about to graduate. And that made me put even more time into networking, going out to conferences, meeting people and, and really pushing myself out of my comfort zone. The situation really pushes you to get out of your comfort zone. So I would say take that lesson from the situation that we're in right now. Thanks for that question. Okay, how many ladies did you pick up with that engineering ring? <laughs> All right, surprisingly, I don't, I don't wear uh, my engineering ring. Uh, I don't really like to wear uh, jewelry or uh, rings. I just, um, there's two reasons why I don't wear my engineering ring. Number one is that if I lose it, then it's, it's kind of hard to get another one back. Uh, number two is it's just a bit, un I just feel uncomfortable wearing rings. I, I just never have worn rings in the past. It's kind of like maybe wearing a watch and then never being used to it. So I would say just the discomfort, but then also I feel as though a lot of engineers, when they wear the ring, uh, they, they feel a sense of superiority over everyone else. Right. And this may be subconscious right? The subconscious ego that comes out. I, I love Ryan Holiday's book, The Ego is the Enemy. Um, and I don't want my subconsciously my ego to come out or me to feel superior over others. So uh, I would I would say I, I keep it in a safe place. So yeah, Nick, unfortunately, no, no, not getting uh, more women with that ring. But uh, great question. Thank you. Wesley asks uh, motivation to get through engineering. Okay, yeah. So motivation to get through engineering is just grunt work, like you got to get the work done right? No matter what, and no matter how much of that is applicable in, in, in your actual career. That's how life is, right? Like you, even though you may not be good at certain things, you have to get certain things done. There's, there's a, there's a, there's a bar that you have to hit. And for engineering is those courses, you got to get them done, right? So I think engineering is a, is a great discipline because it, it mentally, physically, and spiritually like drives you so hard in your undergrad. But after you graduate, it's important to take that momentum and keep pushing forward with it. That, that grind, it never stops. It doesn't stop after, after you get your degree and you get your first job. It, it keeps going on. And that's how I express my energy in this YouTube channel. It's, it's, uh, it's that grind that I'm on. It's that, uh, that willpower that I have. So um, Wesley, great question. Um, I think uh, the motivation to get through engineering uh, is just to um, put, your, put your nose to the grindstone but 
yeah, great question. Another message here is uh, a video on China's thorium molten salt reactor, which is also waterless reactor in Wuwei, China. Yeah, so I've, I've seen a lot of news on this waterless M molten salt reactor. I think molten salt reactor technology is really, really fascinating. It's gonna change the world, uh, to be honest. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's crazy to see China just go like leap ahead with, with this technology they're going to be the first in the world to start up a molten salt reactor, which is insane, right? I think it's because of, you know, a lot of the regulatory restrictions that they don't have in that country, uh, which makes them take those leaps. I don't know. I'm pretty, pretty excited to see that uh, molten salt reactor and a video on that would be really cool. So thanks. Uh, thanks for uh, posing that question, uh, Ashwin. Ashwin. Another question is how far is nuclear fusion? Um, so Hamza Rizvi asks, nuclear fusion is always 15 to 20 years away. <laughs> Like they always say, I would say optimistically, I would say 15 years. Uh, pessimistically, I would say 50 years to 100 years. Uh, nuclear fusion, you know, with the ITER project, I think it's going to, it's, 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 it's going forward, right? There, there's investments in the tens of billions of dollars uh, or, or euros. But I think that's a great, great chance that humanity has as at achieving ignition. So we've, we've hit milestones, even when it comes to nuclear fusion, you know, we've, uh, we've sustained a nuclear fusion reaction for long periods of time. But now when it comes to ignition, I feel like this, this is the moment. I feel like this is the moment. It might happen. Let's see, let's cross our fingers. Um, but we do have nuclear fusion technologies, which are, which are amazing and proven and working, and we should be investing more, uh, in innovating those technologies. So. Uh, thanks. Thanks for that question, Hamza. Thanks again uh, for tuning into this video. Really appreciate uh, the time uh, that you've spent just watching this. And um, uh, yeah, if, if I didn't get a chance to answer your questions, sorry about that. Uh, hope you get a chance to um, submit a question for the 1000 subscriber milestone video that will come out hopefully soon. Um, so thanks again, guys. Uh, really appreciate your time. Um, so take care. Thanks. Bye.